Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome to another weekly Wednesday mod showcase. Yep, I'm attempting to make this a weekly thing, showcasing some of the best new mods or updates to previous mods coming out to Kerbal Space Program 2. Karnasa has a schedule now? What? If you don't know how to install mods, I'd recommend checking out the video I've linked now, as I don't want to be repeating that every week. If any changes occur to how mods are installed, don't worry, I will be updating and covering those changes. You may be aware that Kerbal Space Program 2 had its first patch last week. I covered that in a different video, but the important question here is, did it affect any of the mods I've gone over previously? As far as I'm aware, the update has had very little impact on any mods at all. A few I was running, such as Control System, didn't seem to work correctly, though that could have just been the design I was using at the time. That being said, a lot of the mods I've already spoken about have been updated for the new version of the game, including what I just mentioned, Control System so I'd highly recommend checking mods you might already have and see if they've been updated. To be honest, it's always worth keeping them up to date anyway, but especially so after a big game patch like this. Space Warp, the modding API has been updated for the new game patch, a small update to bring it into the new version of the game, with a few fixes to boot. I've spoken to Cheese3660, the lead behind Space Warp, briefly about future updates to the interface, and there are definitely exciting things coming, including increased support for modders to develop their mods in KSP2, some UI changes and fixes, and better support for parts mods. Yes, parts mods, to give you even more stuff to blow up, but I'll get to more on on those later. Stage Info has had a bit of a rocky road recently, with the mod even being removed from Space Dock. <gasps> Drama. But it is back and it is better than ever. Now rather than being its own window, all the information that Stage Info provides is placed onto the staging stack. This is exactly what I wanted. This is what we had in KSP1, and now we can even change the planet and situation directly from the staging stack. So this, I might add, is actually an improvement to the KSP1 system. I've talked about this mod in every mod video I've done so far, but it is just incredibly useful and has been constantly updated. Plus, I think the new UI on the staging stack fits really well with the game and doesn't feel intrusive at all. Not sure what else would be left to add to this mod now, I'm fairly sure it does exactly what I'd want it to. But who knows, this is what I thought in the last video and here I am talking about it again. So stage info again next time? A simple visual mod that lets you see the countdown whenever you launch a rocket. A nice little touch because I don't understand Kerbalese and now I know exactly when my rocket will launch and this mod was originally made to help players of the game who may be hearing impaired. Nice touch. No toolbar option for this, it'll automatically open up when you begin your launch. Stay until takeoff before disappearing a couple of seconds after. Not sure if it was intentional or a new bug from the patch, but now whenever you press F2 to hide the UI in the game, the time warp bar remains, or at least it does until you download this mod. Super simple fix to the game that makes it easier to take screenshots, you know, so you can get amazing pictures of your most cursed creations exploding majestically. Fairly sure this mod's title is meant to be related to R2-D2 from Star Wars, but I don't know for sure. Being an astromech, it certainly would make sense. This mod is essentially some functionality of MechJet. Right now, you can execute burns with it, something that is also included with Control System 2, but this is a built-in auto burn, rather than one that you have to write a script for. Not that you'd need that with Control System, it comes with that script anyway. Currently, the burn is executed based on the burn time and will not automatically point you towards your maneuver node. You still have have to do this manually, which is something that Control System 2 has over this. But these are features planned on being added, as well as basing the burn on Delta V required, which should make this a much more accurate tool. I'll certainly be keeping my eye out on this, as well as the many other automatic burn mods we're seeing. For now, this will be the only one I cover in this video, but I will be taking a look at the others on offer in future videos. To bring up the mod, there'll be a button to use in the toolbar, Auto Node, as this is what what the mod used to be called, I believe. 
Last week, I brought you notes inside KSP2. This week, I bring you sums. Yes, Kerbal Calculator is a nice little tool to have. Just does basic mathematics in game, quite useful for adding up your delta V. Currently, it can only add, subtract, multiply, and divide, but to be honest, I'm not sure if you really need any more functions than that. This and Notebook may only be minor mods, but having somewhere to take notes and to do calculations while in game does mean I no longer have to tab out to do this. And you know, they're just nice small additions that I think every one should know about. Once again, this can be brought up using the toolbar, both within the VAB and from in flight. Now this is pot a calculator. I'm incredibly happy this, the Resonant Orbit Calculator, has made it into the game. I used to use a website for this all the time, which in short terms told you the orbit you'd need for a carrier spacecraft to place an evenly spaced out constellation of satellites if all were released at periapsis and circularized while the carrier maintained its orbit. That is quite a complicated description. But I have previously done tutorial videos talking about this concept before. This is honestly amazing we have this in game now. This is a brilliant tool, and yeah, I've spoken about it in previous vids about how useful it is. The website, that is. Now we have that functionality in game. To access this, you can get it from the toolbar. With the window open, you can select your final orbit parameters, the amount of satellites in your constellation, which will then give you your target resonant orbit. You can flick between dive and non-dive modes. Dive orbits will mean you'll be circularizing at APO, whereas the opposite will mean you'll be circularizing at periaps. Dive orbits tend to be more expensive for the final satellites to achieve, but you can see all this your yourself on the mod, as it will tell you the delta V required to achieve the final orbit. Really, really, really useful if you want to be setting up some communications networks, which I personally quite like doing. Did you want to add Scott Moonley, the real solar system, Rode, Lua, Armstrong, and Ash to Kerbal Space Program 2? Well, they're not available for now, but this mod here is the start of that. Galaxy Tweaker allows you to add custom galaxies into the game, so very much a successor, for now, to Copernicus from KSP1. Copernicus was the framework that allowed planet packs from the previous game to exist, and without it, we wouldn't have mods like Real Solar System, Beyond Home, Galileo's Planet Pack, Outer Planets mod, you name it, any of the additional planets added by mods in the previous game, even visual mods such as Parallax relied upon Copernicus to allow changes to the stock planet, so seeing something like this making its way to Kerbal Space Program 2 already is incredibly exciting. How long will it be before someone decides to tackle the real solar system and add it into the game? I honestly have no idea, but with this mod that is now much closer than before. That being said, RSS with stock parts is not a fun endeavour, just ask Entropian. 9400 meters per second to get to low Earth orbit? Yeah, we'd need some more efficient parts before we'd be able to tackle that without having to resort to a monster rocket just to get to orbit. Yeah, this mod excites me a great deal. Being someone that likes to dabble with planet packs and leave the stock system behind as fast as possible, I'm very much looking forward to having new planets to explore. Obviously, we need to wait for said planets to be made, but once again, with this now out, I'm hoping that won't be too far away. One word of warning, do not try to load old saves with this mod installed. I tried it and it gave all of my in-flight craft active camo and the ability to control them. This is meant to be for new saves and for editing the stock system. You have been warned. Want simple New Origins rockets too, like displays in your game, to let you know exactly where you're pointing without having to strain your eyes and look all the way over to the left at the nav ball? Well, this mod is for you. This adds exactly what I just described, a heads-up display that will be overlaid onto your vessel, which will allow you to see the direction you're pointing towards, as well as your prograde vector. Unlike simple New Juno rockets Origins 2, you can't adjust your pitch, roll or yaw from the display. At least I couldn't find a way to do this. There are a few visual glitches for now. Sometimes the heads-up display disappears. I found this to be most prevalent when crossing the barrier between the atmosphere and space, and when also trying to view the HUD through engine plumes. But if you want to get rid of it, the mod can be turned off from the toolbar. Or, you know, you could just uninstall it from the Bepinux plugins folder. A little end note for this mod. This was the last mod I added to my game before filming this video. So it might not be this mod, but just the sheer quantity I have now amassed. But at the time I added this, my frames dropped considerably. I need to do more testing and see if it's just this, but this is also a general warning that adding all the mods might not be in your best interests if you want to keep a stable frame rate. This is a mod that does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to switch between vessels while still flying in the atmosphere. Probably won't be useful for long, as this is planned to be added in an upcoming game patch, but still nice that we have the ability to do that with mods for now, especially as it's incredibly useful for the next mod.
Well, here it is, the first ever released parts mod for Kerbal Space Program 2. Sorry. Or Space Plane and Orbital Recovery and Reutilization Company is a mod very similar to Kerbal Reusability Expansion from KSP1. Basically, the aim of this mod is to add SpaceX style parts to allow you to perform boost back burns and land your first stage boosters either at the Space Center or at a little drone ship somewhere out at sea. The mod currently adds two sets of parts, grid fins and RCS nose cones. The grid fins come in three different sizes, so you can make small to very large reusable boosters, and the nose cones come in every size category, so you can place them on top of any sized fuel tank. The nose cones are based upon the extra large aerodynamic nose cone from the base game, which personally is my favourite looking, so even just having that shape in all sizes is a brilliant addition. And going back to Kerbal Reusability Expansion, the grid fin models used are the same from that, but I have seen that the author of Sorry is planning on making their own models for this mod for future editions. Currently, the new parts do not have any icons in the parts picker in the VAB, so you might not be aware of what you're picking up, but the RCS nose cones are located in the utility section and the grid fins can be found in the aerodynamics tab. The new parts also do not work with the colour changer. The only colour you can have these in for now is white, but looking at some of the progress updates on the modding discord, which I'll put a link to now and in the description of this video, work is being done on changing that, so you can make sure that the bright magenta and turquoise of your rocket can also be applied to your fins and nose cones. Speaking of the description of this video though, of course every single mod that I have mentioned over the course of this video will be linked in the description if you want to go and check them out for yourself. Not a mod, but I thought it would be fitting to include this in this video. I was approached by the developer of KSP Build to let me know about the site, and it's actually really nice. It's a site for, well, sharing builds made in KSP2. But one really nice feature about it is the way you download and import craft into your own saves. Using the fact that you can copy craft files to your clipboard, this website does exactly that. So when you found a craft you like the look of and want to try, all you need to do is select export craft to KSP2, and rather than downloading any files, it will copy the craft info, which you can then just straight up paste into the VAB with Control V. No chance of downloading any malware, just a straight up copy paste job. The website does a good job of replicating KSP2's visual style too, which makes it feel like it fits with the game. And you can also find all the latest updates from the development team on the sidebar. Oh, and of course, you can upload craft too. Would be a bit empty if you couldn't do that. Well, there's another list of mods, updates, and more. The first parts mod release is very exciting exciting to me, and I'm looking forward to seeing what creative designs the modding community comes up with next. As I mentioned, I will be attempting to get these videos out every Wednesday, so make sure you subscribe to be notified of the next one. Next time round, I've already got quite a lot planned. The future for mods in this game certainly does seem bright. A big thanks to Mr. Blue Star, Pentium, So Not The Hero Type, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.